Now, all of the witnesses who are going to testify in this case come forward and be sworn in as witnesses. Please. All of the witnesses on both sides. Raise your right hands and take this oath. Do you swear to testify the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Put your hands down, please. The rule of evidence has been invoked in this case, which means that all you witnesses will remain outside the courtroom until you are called to testify. You are not to discuss this case with anyone except the attorneys. The attorneys for the state are Mr. Adkins, Mr. Adkins, and Mr. Carr, and for the defendant, Mr. Tyler. Who will be the first witness for the state? Call Greta May Hansen as the first witness, Your Honor. The rest of you go on outside the courtroom. Take the witness stand, please. Ernie Jones, stand up, please. Arraign the defendant. In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, the grand jurors do present in and to the criminal district court of this county that one Ernest Jones, is that your name? Yes, sir. On or about the 28th day of September in this year of our Lord, in the state of Forsaid, did unlawfully in and upon Greta May Hansen, a woman, make an assault, and did then and there by force threats, and fraud, and without the consent of the said Greta May Hansen, ravish and have carnal knowledge of the said Greta May Hansen. What is your plea to that indictment, Ernie Jones? Not guilty, sir. Not guilty. Did you all hear his plea, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Did you all hear it? Not guilty. Go ahead with your evidence, please. Yes, sir. State your name, please. Grista May Hansen. I didn't hear it. Talk a little louder, please. Grista May Hansen. Miss or Mrs.? Miss. And where are you from, Greta May? Sweden. Stockholm, Sweden. When did you come to this country? Two and a half years ago. I came to New York. And did you work in New York City? Yes, I was a secretary. Where did you live? The YWCA. I will ask you to state now whether or not that YWCA was an integrated YWCA. Yes, it was integrated. And while you were there, did you become acquainted with any members of the Negro race? Yes, I did. I believe you also stayed at the YWCA when you went to New Orleans. Yes, part of the time. Tell us about your trip to New Orleans. Three of my girlfriends from the Y took a bus with me and we were going to San Francisco. We stopped in Philadelphia, Washington, Jackson. Just stayed a day or two here and there. Uh, how much money did you have when you left New York City? Mm, I had $500. This was money you'd saved? Yes. When you got to New Orleans, did you take a job there, the four of you? I did. They went on to San Francisco. Why, why was it you remained in New Orleans? I wanted to see more of the city. During that time, did you become acquainted with any organizations? Congress on Racial Equality. Does that have an abbreviation? Of course. C-O- I. Did you work for CORE in New Orleans? Yes. After you left New Orleans, where did you go? We went to Jackson, Mississippi. And how did you travel? By bus. You said we. You traveled with someone? 
Yes, a boy from Cor. Was this a white boy or a colored boy? He's colored. When you got to Jackson, Mississippi, what did you do? We integrated the bus station. Just how did you integrate this bus station? We walked into the white waiting room together. Were you arrested? Yes. How were you booked? Uh, how were you designated while you were in jail? You mean uh, freedom rider? You are, in fact, a freedom rider? Yes. What did you do? as a freedom rider? Attending meetings, collecting money, handed off pamphlets, things like that. You associated with Negroes? Yes. Stayed at their homes, traveled with them and worked with them for core. Did you also stay in the homes of Negroes when you came to this city? No. I stayed at the YWCA. How did you get to the YWCA? I was waiting at the bus station, and a gentleman offered me a lift downtown, so I went by car. Did the gentleman remain there, or did he leave? He left. Was this man white or colored? He's white. Did you go to work uh, on Thursday when you got to town? I went to look for a job on Friday, and then I started to work on Monday. Did you go to church on Sunday? Your Honor, I think... Did you or did you not attend church on Sunday, September 24th? Yes, I did go to church. Was that a white church or a Negro church? A Negro church. Now, on the next day, that would be Monday. Uh, tell the jury what you did on Monday. I went to work as a secretary at the First State Bank. And after work, what then? I went to a meeting of the NWACP. Did you solicit money for CORE while you were there? Yes, I collected the $40. What, uh, what did you do with this money? Uh, they gave me a check for the money, and I made it to CORE. Did you make friends with any of these people? One person, yes, Ina Baker. Is she a white person or a Negro? She's a Negro person. When did you next see or talk with Ina Baker? I called her the next morning. I had been asked to leave the YWCA and... Uh, just, uh, just state the facts as to why you had to leave the YWCA. I was asked to leave because I was associating with Negroes. They saw me get out of the cab with Ina when we got back to the Y from the NWACP meeting. Did, uh, did Ina find you a place to stay? Yes, she found the room in a college hotel and uh, then she had to move on Wednesday. What did you do that evening? I was invited to dinner. A gentleman who drove me to the Y, he called. And after dinner, where did you go? We went dancing. Just what kind of a place was this where you went to dance? Object, Your Honor. He is assuming she went there to dance. Her answer was that she went there to drink. I think she said dance. One more question. Was this man older than you, about your age, or younger? He was an older gentleman. When did he take you home? About 10.30, I think. That was to this colored hotel? Yes. Did he go up to your room with you? No. Greta, when did you first meet Ernie Jones? The next morning, before I went to work. So that would be on the morning of September 28th? Yes. Would you describe that meeting? I was getting ready for work, and there was a knock at the door. He asked if I was presentable. I said yes, and opened the door, and he walked in. He introduced himself. He said he was the owner of the hotel and that he had housed Freedom Riders before. He said he had helped them raise money and that he could help me collect money for CORE. Then he brought out a folder and showed me some photos of some models and said he was in that business that I could raise money by modeling. He said he was in the advertising business. These models, were they fully clothed? 
They were wearing bathing costumes. Go on. I said I wasn't interested in posing in anything like that. And he got angry, said he had no intention of suggesting such a thing. Objection. Your Honor, she's drawing a conclusion. Sustained. All right. Uh, what other conversation did you have that morning? I said I had to go to work. And he said he would see me about it later on. I said, okay. And did you? Yes. When I got back from work that evening, I asked the man behind the desk if there was some place I could eat. And he said, there's only the club two blocks away. How did you get to the club? I walked. and the waitress come over and I order some dinner. Did you have anything to drink at this club? I had a 7-Up. While you were there, did you see anyone that you knew or had seen previously? Ernie Jones. He was at the table with some other people and when he saw me, he came over. if everything was okay and I said yes it was and he said there was no need for me to pay my check because he owned the place owned the place? what else did he say? Well, he said he would see me at the hotel about collecting money for court and I said okay then he went away and joined the people he was with and what happened then? well there was a gentleman come over and he wanted to know what I wanted the musicians to play and then Ernie Jones come over and asked him to leave. And then he said, if I am going to the hotel anyway, I may as well ride with him. And did you ride with him? I did. When you got to the hotel, did you go in the front entrance? No, in the back. And did you go to your room? I believe we went into the lobby and picked up my key. Then where did you go? To uh, my room. Did you invite Ernie Jones to your room? I didn't invite him. He just came in. He just came in? Yes, sir. Then what happened? He asked me if I would like a drink. I said, not particularly. He said he was going to have one anyway and asked what I would like. I said, rum and coke. How long was he gone? About five minutes? He's leading the witness again. I wish you'd ask him to stop that. I'll handle it. Now, Mr. Atkins, you know better than that. Don't lead. Miss Hanson, what happened when he returned? He poured himself a drink and... And then he gave me one, showed me the models again, and said he would need my measurements and little about my background for advertising. Now, please testify as to what followed. He started to take my measurements. He measured my arm, my wrist, wrote it down on a piece of paper. What other measurements did he take? My ankle. Measured your ankle? Yes. Did he write that down? Yes. Measured what next? My calf. The calf of your leg? Yes. And what did he measure next? He said he wanted to measure my thigh. Did he lift your skirt? He touched it and I objected. How did you object? I said I would do it myself. You would raise your skirt yourself? No. I would take the measurement myself. He said it was necessary for him to do it, since he knew exactly where to measure. 
He asked me if I had a bathing suit with me. I said yes, and he suggested I put it on. And what did you do when he suggested that? I unpacked my bathing suit and walked into the bathroom. Did you close the door? Yes, sir. I locked the door. You locked the door? Object to that. He's leading the witness. She said she locked the door, didn't you? Didn't you say you locked the door? Yes, I locked the door. I thought that's what she said. Now, did you put on the bathing suit? Yes, I did. What happened after that? I went out into the room again, and uh, he measured my thigh. Measured your thigh? Mm Mm-hmm. What part of your thigh did he measure? Uh, Would you indicate to the jury what part of your thigh he measured? What did he do or say next? He wanted my waist measurement. And then did he write that down? Yes. What did he next say or do? He gave me the tape measure to measure my bust myself. Did he write that down? Yes. What next was said or done? He wanted to measure my hips. He said my bathing suit was too thick to measure through. I said, uh, I will go back into the bathroom and measure my hips myself. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the witness. I went back in the bathroom and measured my hips myself. This will be state's exhibit number one, Your Honor. Would you examine this, please? Mm. What is it? Do you recognize that exhibit? Yes. Uh, this is the bathing suit I wore on the night on the 28th. We offer this into evidence. No objection. Admitted. Is this the bathing suit that you mm. removed in the bathroom? Yes. And what clothes did you put back on? My panties, bra, slip, my dress. Was the door open or closed when you redressed? It was closed. What next occurred? He told me to get on the bed and take various poses. He would show me how because the advertising agent wouldn't have time to train me. Now just describe to the jury what he told you to do. He showed me a point where the camera would be. He told me to glance up at the camera and look embarrassed in various poses and positions. down with an imaginary powder puff. He told me that the agency would do this and that I would irritate and the powder would stop me irritating. See. But I got up off the bed and told him I couldn't go through with this type of work. He pushed me back down on the bed. I said I didn't like for people to touch me. He said not to worry about it, that to the man with the camera I was just another model and but he wasn't concerned with the fact that I was a woman. I still said I couldn't go through with it, and I got up off the bed again. Then he lifted me up. I struggled and asked him to let me down, and I wiggled and tried to get loose, but he had a very firm grip, and I could hardly move. Then he was pinning me down on the bed, around the back of me, pinning me down. He had his right arm, he had his arm around my back, his right arm, and his weight on me, on the left side on me. I started to scream. I was hysterical. When I was screaming, he was saying, no one would hear me because he owned the hotel and no one would answer my cry. He took his hand off my mouth and he said if I asked him nicely he would let me up. 
I tried to ask him nicely, but it was very hard. I was so hysteric, and it was very hard for me to say anything. Then he said, well, that wasn't good enough. I was squeezing my legs together, but he forced them apart with his knees. I started to scream again. I was screaming, struggling and screaming. I cried out, God, take my life! God, take my life away! Go to give, Lord, my dear! And what was Ernie Jones doing when you screamed out for God to take your life away? He was, uh, raping me. Did he hurt you? Yes. Yeah. He hurt me very much. Objection. He's leading the witness. I would also like to object to her use of the word rape. That's a conclusion on her part. Please instruct the witness and the jury that under Texas law, the word rape has certain legal denotations and connotations. Only the jury can determine whether it is or is not rape. Objection sustained. Rape is a matter of law, and the jury is so instructed. Now I will ask you to state the facts with reference to whether or not you consented to Ernie Jones. I did not consent at all. I objected very much. When it was over, what then? I, I was crying. He said it was good to cry, but no one would hear me. Then he went towards the door as if to leave, and then he mentioned the money. The money? He said he would leave $200 at the desk. I presume it was a donation for court. Did he say anything about your doing modeling anymore? No, he never mentioned it. Just tell the jury, Miss Hanson, what happened between the time Ernie Jones left your room and the time you reported this to the police? Well, first I called Ina Baker, but I was afraid to tell her because there might be an extension to the telephone. I was afraid to stay in my room, afraid that he might come back. So I went down to the lobby and talked to the old man behind the desk. Then I went back and locked myself in the room. The next morning, early, I went down to the bus terminal. I was crying, and I ordered coffee, and I sat down there, and I wondered what to do. After a while, I called Ina and told her that Ernie Jones had molested me. Then I asked her to pick up my luggage because I couldn't go back to that hotel. Did you make another call? Yes, I looked in the directory for a Catholic minister and I called and asked them where the nearest church was to the bus station. And did you make an appointment? Yes, that afternoon at four o'clock.
And when I talked to the minister, he suggested I call the police. Did you tell the police what had occurred on the night of September 28th? Yes. Object to that. It's an attempt on their part to show and prove outcry. Sustained. Well, did you talk to the police? Yes. Did you see a doctor? Yes. I think it was about six o'clock. About six. Did he examine? Yes, he did. Did you later see Ernie Jones? Yes, he was brought to the police station. Did you identify him? Yes, I did. Your Honor, if you please, the state now passes this way. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we will recess. The instructions I have given you here all apply. Everyone be here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Your Honor. All right, proceed. Miss Hanson, the indictment reads that Ernie Jones, by force, threat, and fraud, and without your consent, ravished you and had carnal knowledge of you. Is that correct, Miss Hanson? Yes. Miss Hanson, you don't still claim that this rape and assault was accomplished by threat now, do you? Object to that, Your Honor. Sustain it. Do you know what a threat is? Yes, I do. He did threaten me. He threatened me he would not stop until I stopped screaming. Did he tell you he would kill you? No. Did he tell you that he would pull out a knife and cut you? No. Did he exhibit a pistol to you? No. Did he strike you with his hands and fists? No! Well, Miss Hanson, is there any other kind of threat you'd like to put into evidence at this time? Object to that, Your Honor. He should ask what occurred. Sustained. Miss Hanson, let's talk about fraud. Will you tell us what Ernie Jones did to you in that regard? Now, Your Honor, I... Don't... I just wanted to understand what's in the indictment, Your Honor. I can't think of anything that requires you to know what is in the indictment. Miss Hanson... You consider yourself of normal intelligence, don't you? You're not weak-minded, are you? Not to my knowledge. Will you tell the jury what fraud Ernie Jones perpetrated on you to get you to go to bed with him? He led me to believe that he was respectable, that I could trust him. He what? That he was respectable. Now this Mr. X, the man who took you drinking and dancing, you knew he was married, didn't you? No, sir, I did not. He didn't tell you he had a wife and three children? No, sir. Well, I'd call that fraud, wouldn't you? Object to that, Your Honor. That calls for a conclusion on her part. Sustained. Miss Hanson, we've talked about threats, we've talked about fraud. Now let's talk about force. Did Ernie Jones force you to leave the nightclub? Well, he said he was... Did he force you to leave the club? Just answer yes or no. No. Did he take you by the arm and pull you into his automobile? No. Did he force his way into your hotel room? No, he asked... In fact, you invited him in, didn't you? No. Well... Why are you looking at Mr. Adkins? As a matter of fact, Miss Hanson, you did want Ernie Jones in your room, didn't you? No, I did not. You didn't tell him to leave, did you? No, well, we had business to discuss. He didn't force you to talk business there, did he? Well, but there was all... Uh... Yes or no? No. Do you think it was a little unusual for you to be discussing business in your bedroom over a rum and coke? No. B well, in my bedroom, I guess it was, and... Did you see Ernie Jones pouring your drink? Yes. Now say when. Was it that much? I object to this demonstration, Your Honor. 
Let her answer it. Did he pour that much? It was a big glass of rum and coke. You didn't see how much rum he put in it? No. Did you taste the rum and coke? Yes. Could you taste the rum in it? Yes. Was it strong? No. Not particularly, no. But he you said... did drink it and he did not force you to, did he? No. By the way, how is your rash? Beg your pardon? Why a rash? Do you still have it? I object to that, Your Honor. Just a moment. What are you talking about? A rash that she had. If you know what he's talking about, answer it. If you don't, don't. Do you or do you not still have your rash? No, not now. You don't still have it, but you did that night, didn't you? A rash? A little bit, uh-huh. I wouldn't say it was a rash. What would you say it was? A breaking out? No, there were a couple of spots. Isn't it yes. true that you pulled up the edge of your bathing suit to show Ernie where the spots were? No. You deny that? Yes, I do. Was this on your right hip? No, my left hip. Didn't you tell Ernie Jones that the girls were kidding you about the spots? That it was because you hadn't had a man in so long? <laughs> Miss Hanson, we were talking about force. Did Ernie Jones take your measurements by force? No, he didn't. He How long were there. you in the bathroom changing? A few minutes. Did you put on this striped bathing suit and wear it in front of Ernie Jones? Yes. Did that embarrass you? No. Would you put this bathing suit on for the jury? No, I would not. Now, Miss Hanson, let's give the jury a simple yes or no answer on this. Did Ernie Jones put this bathing suit on you by force? No. Ask the witness. Mr. Atkins? No further questions. Stand aside. The court will recess for lunch. Everybody be back here at 2 o'clock. May the state proceed, Your Honor? Go ahead. Call Dr. Alexander P. Sutton. All right, bring the witness in, please. <laughs> Will the attorneys approach the bench? Take your full name to the court and jury, please, sir. Dr. Alexander P. Sutton. Doctor, do you hold an official position with the county at this time? I do. I'm assistant health officer. When did you finish medical school? 1938. Doctor, what type of examination did you make on the person of Greta May Hansen? It was for an alleged rape. Your Honor, I object. He's invading the province of the jury. I sustain that. Doctor, would you tell the jury what you found in your examination? I found the tissue swollen and irritated. The hymen was ruptured. And was that a recent rupture? In my opinion, the rupture had been made within the previous 24 to 72 hours. Did you make a slide, Doctor? Yes, I did. And what did you find? Found spermatozoa. You mean the male human seed? Yes. Spermatozoa is the biological term for the male cell of generation. In other words, doctor, she was a virgin. In my opinion, she was a virgin, yes. No further questions, pass the witness. Doctor, you don't mind if I ask a few questions, do you? He's here for that purpose, Mr. Tyler. <coughs> doctor? What is a gynecologist? A gynecologist is a specialist in the treatment of those things particular to women. Doctor, are you a man? In your examination of Miss Hanson, did you find any bruises or lacerations on her body or about her face, mouth? I did not. Did you examine her clothing? 
Yes. Did you find anything there? Nothing. Now, Doctor, I'll ask you this. Is it possible for a woman to have intimate relations with a man a number of times without her hymen being ruptured? Yes, that's possible. Conversely, is a ruptured hymen positive proof that a woman has lost her virginity? No, not positive proof. In other words, an examination of the hymen cannot determine the virginity of a woman. There is no definite way, no positive finding. Just one thing more, Doctor. We don't question that you found spermatozoa in your examination. But I'd like to ask you this. Is there any way you can tell whether that spermatozoa came from a white person, a Latin American, or a Negro? No, sir, I know of no way. We pass the witness. Dr. Sutton. State rest at this time, Your Honor. Stand aside, please. please. Let's proceed with the defense. May it please the court. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it now becomes my duty to produce the evidence and the witnesses that will prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Ernie Jones is not guilty as charged. Officer Burns, calling your attention to September the 29th, did you or did you not go to the residence of Ernie Jones? Yes, I did. Well, what did you do? I had a warrant for his arrest and I arrested him. What time was that, approximately? Mm, 9.45, 9.50. And what was old Ernie doing when you got there? Oh, I think he was watching television. When you arrested him, how did old Ernie act? Was he surprised? Did he run for the door? Did he fight you? Objection, Your Honor. He's doing it again. He's leading. Sustained. I believe you were also the investigating officer at the hotel room where this incident took place. Yes. Who did you talk with there? I talked to the room clerk, an old fellow about 5'7", and a mustache. Was that the Abraham? Willis Abraham? Well, I don't remember his name. What time was it when you got to the room? Oh, it was after 11 o'clock, Mr. Tyler. Was the room in disorder? Or furniture turned over? No. What about the bed? How did it appear to you? Well, it hadn't been made up since it was slept in. Did you examine the bed clothes with a flashlight? Yes, sir. Find anything? No. As a matter of fact, you didn't take the bedclothes with you. No. Had you talked with Greta May Hansen prior to your investigation? Yes, I had. Pass the witness. Did you have any scientific analysis made of this bedclothing? No. Do you know whether the bedclothing you saw on that bed was the same that had been there the night before? No, I do not. Did you examine the bedspread with your flashlight? Well, I examined the sheets with my flashlight. Now, this bedspread, uh, we turned it back. Well, my partner had. And I looked over it, then I started looking at did it. Did you examine the bedspread? Uh, no, sir, I, I did not. Not, not closely. Uh, my partner examined it uh, more than I did. Did you find two glasses in the room? Yes, uh, one of them had brown liquid in it. Did you take the glasses for laboratory tests? No. We, we left them there. You left them there? No further questions, Your Honor. That'll be all. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Stand down, please. Call Fred Weaver. On the night of September the 28th, did you register at the Ebony Hotel? Yes, I did. Mark this as Defendant's Exhibit Number 5. We offer. Any objection? 
No objection. Did you sign the name David C. Cooper on this card? Yes, sir, I signed it. Well, why did you sign the name Cooper when your name is Weaver? Well, my wife and I, we've been having family trouble prior to this. And we had been in an argument that night down at my place of business. So I left and went up there to the hotel. I signed my name like that so as to keep her from finding where I was, where I was staying. How long were you at the hotel? Oh, I got there about 8, 8.30. Then I left somewhere around 7 the next morning. Were you signed any particular room at the hotel? Room 6, I believe. Was that on the first floor or second floor? First floor. Well, what did you do in room 6 that night? Oh, I listened to the radio, read a magazine, till about 11 or 11.30. Then I went to sleep. Did you go out at all that night? No, sir. Did you hear any disturbance, any particular kind of noise? No, sir, I didn't. You didn't hear anyone screaming? No, sir, I sure did. That's the way. Who was there with you in the hotel that night? No one. All hold up by yourself, huh? Yes, sir. Just reading the magazine, playing the radio? Yes, sir. Had the radio down real low, huh? Yes, sir. That's right. Now, what were you and your wife having all this trouble about? Object. Immaterial. And irrelevant. That would be his own personal business and not Mr. Atkins. They've gone into it, Your Honor. Answer it. Sir? Answer it. Well, it was about a telephone call from a lady friend. I had a phone call from your girlfriend, huh? Yes, sir. I mean, no. I didn't get the phone call. My wife answered the phone, and that's when the argument really started. That's when I decided to leave. And you went to the hotel and registered under a fictitious name? Yes, sir. David C. Cooper. Well, now, how do you reckon old Ernie was able to find you under the name of David C. Cooper? Well, he didn't find me. I found him. And why'd you do that? Well, everybody was talking about this little incident here that happened. Little incident that happened? Yes, sir. Well, they wanted to know about it. So I called Mr. Jones and talked to him. I told him I was up at the hotel the night it happened. So he told me to call Mr. Tally here and talk to him. Just one more question. How long have you known the defendant, Ernie Jones? Oh, about six or seven years. He does my advertising for me. No more questions. Stand down. Next witness, please. What is your name? Willis Abraham. How old are you? 63. Where were you employed on the night of September the 27th? The Ebony Hotel. Will you tell us whether or not you saw Greta Mae Hansen on the, on the 28th of September? Yes. A little while after I went on at 6 o'clock in the evening. She came down and wanted to know a good place to eat. I told her the closest place was the club, two blocks down the street. They had good sandwiches. Now, do you recall what room she had at the hotel, the number? Oh, yes. Room 14. I hand you what has been marked Defendant's Exhibit Number 5, and I ask you to look at it carefully and tell me whether or not you can identify it. It is a hotel card. A hotel card. What name is on it? David C. Cooper. What room? Room 6. Well, where is room 6? It's on the first floor. Is room 6 directly under room 14? Yes, it is. Do you have central heating and air conditioning throughout the hotel? Yes. Now, those air conditioning ducts communicate with one another, don't they? I would think so. Now, after Greta May left or went to the club, rather. When was the next time you saw her? It was quite a while later. I saw her and Ernie at the back door. What happened next? Well, they came in, came down the hall, got the key to room 14, and then they went on upstairs. When did you next see the two of them? Quite a while later, they came down to the lobby. During the time that they were upstairs, did you hear any outcry of distress? No. Did you hear anyone scream, God, take my life away? No. 
Добре, Ясно. Mr. Abraham, how long have you lived in Texas? Beg your pardon? Mr. Abraham, do you have a hearing problem? Well, I have some help now. You're wearing a hearing aid, is that right? Yes, sir. You wear it all the time? All the time. Those are hearing aid glasses you're wearing? Only on one side. You have had Freedom Riders in your hotel before? Yes, sir. Men or women or both? I believe they were women. Of the Negro race or the white race? Both. Now, what is the rental charge for the full night on a room there at the Ebony Hotel? Six dollars and twenty cents. Is that double or single? If you mean double, two people, yes. That is for two people. Well, how much is the charge for one person for a room? If one person comes in and wants a room, the price is six dollars and twenty cents. <laughs> But this card shows that Fred Weaver paid only $4.50. What does that mean? Well, some folks come in and want a room for only three hours. Does that mean they don't spend the whole night? Well, not ordinarily, no. It all depends. Well, did you rent this room for all night? Or do you remember renting this room at all, Mr. Abraham? I don't remember. You don't remember? No, sir. That is not my card. Do, do you mean this is not your handwriting? No, sir. Was there anybody else on duty on the night of September 28th? No, sir. And you don't recall this fellow David C. Cooper? No, sir. You think maybe somebody swiped that registration card and filled it in? Well, they have done some worse things than that. <laughs> <laughs> they have? And <laughs> they evidently did it this time, didn't they? Object! Sustained, disregarded. Now, Mr. Abraham, when was the first time that you had a conversation with Ernie Jones about this Swedish girl? Well, he called right after I directed her to the club for a sandwich. He called you? And what did he want? He wanted to know if that party was still there. Greta Mae Hansen? That is right. Well, what did you tell Ernie? I told him she wasn't there. And then he wanted to know if I knew where she was. And I told him where I directed her to go for something to eat, and he hung up. Old Ernie was sure hot on her trail, wasn't he? <laughs> Objection! Sustained. You say Miss Hansen wasn't crying or hysterical. Was she in a state of shock? Well, she could have been. I wouldn't know about that. Now just think about the first thing that she said to you. Where can I get a shampoo? Subconsciously, she wanted to be washed of this great sin that Ernie Jones had committed against her. Objection. But she was too shocked and scared Objection. to tell you so outright. Isn't that true? No, Your Honor, this man's no psychiatrist, and neither is Mr. Adkins. Sustained. No further questions, Your Honor. Stand down, please. Court stands recessed. Same instructions apply to the jury and the witnesses. All right, proceed. Call your next witness. Call Officer Henry Miller. Your name is Henry Miller? Yes. You're an investigator for the district attorney's office? Yes. What is your relationship with Greta Mae Hansen? Your Honor, I object to this matter of putting our investigator in the role of a witness. Find out what he has to say. He was sworn as a witness, Your Honor. He was. Mr. Miller, isn't it a fact that you bought Greta Mae Hansen a new dress, the very dress she's been wearing? That's what I'm objecting to, Your Honor. It's immaterial. I think we have a right. Are you attacking this witness for some reason, Mr. Tyler? No. Just asking if he bought a new dress. For the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Overrule you, Mr. Prosecutor. Proceed. Mr. Miller, did you buy the dress for Miss Hansen? 
Yes. You did? Yes, I did. Who furnished the money for this dress? I have, so far. Do you expect to get it back? Well, I hope so. Your Honor, I object to this whole business about a dress. It's not relevant to any matter here. Sustain it. That part about the money he hopes to get back. Who told you to buy the dress? I object to that, Your Honor. Don't answer it. Did you have a conversation with Mr. Adkins here before you bought the dress? Yes. Mr. Miller, tell us about the other dress, the one she had on before you gave her the dress she is now wearing. Mm -hmm. I believe it was a, a summer dress of some kind. Did it come a little short, uh, above the knees? I didn't pay that much attention. Was it a rather low-cut dress? I don't know. I, uh, I don't remember. Uh, about the neck? I don't know. Mr. Miller, you aren't related in any way to Miss Hanson, are you? No. Are you in the habit of buying women's dresses? I object to that. Don't answer that. Strike the question. What did you pay for the dress? $9.95. Is that the wholesale price? Object to that, Your Honor. It's immaterial. Sustain it. The wholesale price? Whether he bought it wholesale or not has nothing to do with this case. I suppose the fact that they've been looking after her has nothing to do with the case either. I sustain that. Now you show me how that could be material. I wasn't asking this for any particular purpose, but for the sake of the record. You just get on to something else. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Miller, would you tell us whether or not you looked after Miss Hanson uh, getting to court and back and forth? Yes, sir. She isn't your girlfriend, is she? Object to that, Your Honor, and ask the counsel be reprimanded for it. Yes, that's a bad question, but I'll let him answer. Is she your girlfriend? No. Thank you, Mr. Miller. That's all. Isn't it your job to see that this woman gets to court? Yes, it is. No further questions. Stand down. Your Honor, defense would like to recall Greta May Hansen. Miss Hansen, are you a member of the Swedish Club of New York? Yes. Do you know the manager, Mr. Carl Bjorkman? Yes. Miss Hansen, after you claimed you got raped, did you ask Mr. Carl Bjorkman to gather all the newspaper articles about the case and paste them in a book and send them on to you? Well, not exactly. From I the was... Swedish papers? Yes, I did do that. Isn't it true that the reason you claimed rape against Ernie Jones was to get in the newspapers and cause racial strife in this community where there was none, a community in which you don't belong? My mother has already had a nervous breakdown. I tell you, that was not my purpose. Why were you writing off and asking everyone to save the newspaper clippings for you? Because I wanted to know how much my family knew of it. Because you wanted to know how much publicity there was, didn't you? Yes, what they were reading. When you were on that bed, and old Ernie Jones was brushing you down with that imaginary powder puff, didn't it finally dawn on you that something was rotten in Denmark, Object. something was sour in Sweden, Object. and that there was a nigger in the wood pile? Sustain both objections. Miss Hanson, you say you object to what happened on that bed the night of the 28th? Yes, very much. You were screaming at the time? Yes, I was. If you don't mind, Miss Hanson, would you scream for this jury the way you did that night? No, I can't. The conditions would be so different. I can't. Well, could you scream for them just once? God, take my life away? No. You can't do that? No, I can't. But I tell you, I'm the only one who knows what happened that night. And he raped me. He did. He raped me. Your witness, Mr. Prosecutor. Now, Greta, the next morning after this happened, 
You went down to the bus station. Why? I had it all fixed in my mind to run away and get into a place surrounded with people. I, I felt so ashamed. I... Tell me, why did you wait all day before you advised the police about what Ernie had done to you? I was concerned with the seriousness of the accusation. What do you mean you were concerned about the seriousness of the accusation? Because I do not believe in capital punishment. Thank you, Miss Hanson. Stand down, please. Mm. Jones. Come around. Have you been sworn? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Your name is Ernie Jones. Yes, sir. You are the defendant in this case? Yes, sir. Bernie Jones, will you tell the jury whether or not you raped Greta May Hansen? I object to that, Your Honor. It's leading and suggestive. I believe I will sustain that, inasmuch as rape is a legal term. Rape means several things. I think you should tell him a little more about what you're talking about. Bernie, what kind of business are you in at this time? Oh, various businesses, uh, real estate, I'm a disc jockey, uh, but mostly I'm in the advertising business. I hand you defense exhibits number seven and eight. Ask you if you can identify them. Yes, sir, I can. I use it in my advertising. In what way? Well, in this particular case, I, I take a basic model's picture and then I superimpose the product that I want to advertise over it. And then in turn, I place it in the advertising media that I'd agreed to. All right. Your Honor, submit it into evidence. Your Honor, may we have this witness on board here? Go ahead. Who took these pictures? Well, I can't say myself who took that one. I have at my disposal several photographers that I use sometimes. Were, they, I, were you present when these pictures were taken? Well, yes, sir. I directed them. You direct the photographing of these models, and you furnish the models. Isn't that right? Well, if I have a photographer who's capable of taking my directions verbally, then I let him do it alone. If he's not capable, why, then I generally direct it myself. Are these the pictures you showed to Greta Mae Hansen? Are those the ones? Yes. Well, yes, I'm sure that they would have been among the variety that I showed her. Were they the pictures you showed Greta Hansen? Well, I'm sure they would be two of the ones that I did show her. Did you show these pictures to Greta Hansen? Your Honor, is this voir dire or cross-examination? I think the questions he has asked are pertinent. Overrule you. Go ahead. Answer. Yes. I'm sure they would be two of the ones that I would show. I'm very proud of that work. Did you show her these two pictures? Your Honor, he's arguing with a witness. Either answer it you did or you didn't. There's bound to be some answer. I'm sure I did, because those Stop two are the ones... right there. Now you have answered the question. Now go ahead to something else. We have no objection. Your Honor, we offer it in evidence. Now, Ernie, what interest do you have in the Ebony Hotel? Uh, I'm the lessor. Uh, that is, the lessee, rather. You lease the hotel. You pay money as a lessee. Yes, that's, that's exactly what I do. I, I pay rent. Would you recount for us the circumstances surrounding the first time you met Greta May Hansen? Tell the jury what happened. Well, when I went up to the room, I knocked on the door. And when I knocked at the door, a voice on the inside said, uh, come in. And I said, uh, are you decent? And she said, just a minute. And then I waited and, uh, well, in a couple of minutes, the door was opened by Miss Hanson. I 
I told her who I was, and she said, uh, come on in. I've heard all about you. What did you do? Well, I, I went on in, and I told her that there was a mistake about the room, and that she was not going to be charged for it, and not to worry about it. Well, I started to go, and she spoke up, said she wanted to talk to me, that uh, she had a problem. What was her problem? Well, she told me the condition of her money was such that she needed to get some immediate help and wanted to know whether or not there was any way I could help her. Said that she had heard that I did so many things, and I told her I could help raise money for Cora, but that I couldn't talk about it this morning because I had a full schedule ahead for the next couple of days. And I wouldn't be able to see her again until Saturday morning. And then she said that uh, she needed help before Saturday morning and wanted to know more about my advertising business. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll dash down to my car and I'll let you look at my brochure and you'll get an idea of the work I'm associated with. Now, how long were you gone from room 14? Well, just less time than it takes to go downstairs, get my briefcase out of the car, remove the brochure from it, go back through the lobby, mention to Mr. Abraham that I'd be right down to have my money ready, that I was in a hurry and going upstairs to the room. Now, after Miss Hanson looked at the brochure, what did she do? She was very much interested in all those things that I showed her, and she mentioned the fact that she studied dancing and hoped to become a movie star. Did you do anything else that day after you picked up the hotel receipts? Well, I went to my office and did some other work. All right. What time on this particular Thursday evening did you set out to collect money? Well, it was right after the news went off TV. Six o'clock? Oh, about 6.51. Huntley Brinkley, that thing. I have a little ritual that I go through when I go out to collect money. I, I tell myself I'm going out to collect money and I want to collect it tonight. And I take all the money out of my pocket and I leave it at home. Are you a superstitious person? Well, when it comes to money. <laughs> that is to the extent that I feel that I collect a little harder. That is, I go after my money a little harder when I go out with empty pockets. I want to come back with them full. Where did you go that evening after you left your house? See, my first stop was at the C&E TV shop. Where was your next stop? And next, I went to uh, the Comet Club. You don't want them to know that you actually came in to collect any money or get money, so I veered off a little bit, and I went to a table and talked to some friends. Well, I guess I was there about... Uh, four or five minutes when one of the fellows at the table asked me to take a look at the young lady seated at another table. And uh, by that time, my eyes had got adjusted to the darkness in there, and I looked over there, and I recognized uh, Greta Mae Hansen. Did you talk with these men about her? Oh, yes, sir. I... Well, they said, uh, this must be something we can pick up, looking over there at the table. I told them, I said, no, she's all right, not to bother her. I'd met her before. And then I went on over there and I asked Miss Hanson if everything was all right. She said, uh, I have an immediate problem I've got to talk to you about. Was she talking about money? Yes, yes. Uh, but I told her not to worry about the check, that uh, I'd take care of that. And then I went on over to the cashier and I asked her about the check. did locate it. She said it was 82 cents. I told the cashier to put the bill against what they owed me. And then I turned around to go back to the table and she wasn't there. And I looked all around and there she was up there dancing.
All right. Ernie, what did you do after the dance was over? Well, I said to her, I said, now look, Miss Hanson, you're here to collect money for core. Now, if you go twisting and allowing yourself to be picked up easily, why, uh, the word will get around. Because it's unusual for people like you to be in this neighborhood. And the word spreads like wildfire, and folks will get the wrong impression. And she said, uh, well, I didn't want to be rude. He asked me to dance with him. What'd you say to that? Well, I said, uh, well, it wasn't a good idea. And then I asked her if she knew how to get back to the hotel, and, uh... She said, why don't you get a bottle and come on and go back with me, and then I can tell you all about this problem I've got. And I foolishly said yes. I walked in the rum, sat down the liquor, and asked her how did she want me to pour it. And she told me to make it medium. Medium? Yes, sir. How much rum did you pour into Miss Hanson's glass? Well, I gave her more than I gave myself. I'm not much of a rum drinker. What's the next thing happened in the rum? We started talking. She closed the door and then came back and sort of uh, sprawled on the bed. She set a drink down on the floor beside the bed. She told me how disappointed she was at collecting only $40 at her last meeting. And I explained to her why she was having a lack of success. I told her that uh, there was a way to use herself that would get her more money. And then I showed her how to be a little surprised at a decent donation. And I also showed her how to quickly produce tears when she needed to. How to produce tears quickly? Yes, yes. I, I showed her how to reach for a purse rapidly and, and get out a handkerchief and, and dab it in the corner of the eye. And just barely as you possibly could, let that linen just touch the eyeball. And in doing so, it would produce tears. And to the onlooker, it would look as though you were stifling tears. Because even after you removed your handkerchief, the eyeball would overflow and it would run tears. What did you tell her about the money you would help her collect? And expenses. How would you handle expenses? Oh, I told her that uh, when she collected money at the jazz concerts I promote, that whatever money she got, whatever way she got it, she could keep it. All I wanted her to do was to count it in front of my cashier, leave me a receipt for the total amount that had been raised, and then she could keep it and do whatever she was going to do with it. What did she do when you told her that? Then she jumped up off the bed and ran across the room and kissed me on the cheek. Well, after she kissed you, what happened then? Well, she wanted to know if I knew why there was so little interest in the core movement here. And I tried to explain to her that the things that core fights for in most areas that we had already obtained here through negotiation and education. And as a result, there was very little need for a core movement here. Up to that point, how many times had Greta May kissed you? Oh, we had... Uh, kissed each other three or four times uh, between drinks. What did you talk about then? Well, she uh, wanted to know if... Um, she wanted to tell me all about uh, herself. She wanted to know if I could get her any publicity. And when I said yes, why, she began to tell me a whole story. She told me about her life in Sweden and how she uh, hitchhiked around the continent. She traveled a lot with this woman, this woman that's much older than she was, and she learned a lot from her. Did she mention the modeling again? Oh, yes, we talked about modeling, and then I, uh, I challenged her as to whether she looked as good in a bathing suit as she said she did, and she uh, tried to demonstrate by pirouetting and... Uh, uh, twirling around so that her skirt would stand out. Uh-huh. Well, I told her that wasn't enough, that the way you properly tell is that uh, if you have proper graduations... Ernie, now, uh, what do you mean in modeling, proper graduations? Well, what I mean is that in a woman, it's a difference in the measurements between her forearm and her wrist. Now, uh, if the difference is less than three inches, why, she's skinny. If it's more than three and a half inches, why, she's fat. Well, is that a method of telling? Oh, it's just a rule of thumb. There's no set method of telling or anything like that. It just gives you a general idea of whether a person has a decent shape. <laughs> Can you identify this? Yes, sir. That's my handwriting. When I was taking her measurements, I made those notes. The first thing I measured was her arm, and then I measured her ankle. Well, 
Well, then we took a drink, and I said, uh, let me see your thighs. And she did that uh, twirling again. Pirouetting? Yes, sir. And then what happened? Well, I said, uh, that's no way to see. And then she said to me, no, it isn't. I got a better idea. And she said, uh, just a minute. And then she went into the bathroom. What did you do while she was in the bathroom? Uh, well, I noticed our glasses was a little low, so I mixed us both another drink. And by the time I'd finished mixing the drinks, I turned around and there she was, uh, posing in a bathing suit. Did that interest you, Ernie, a little bit? Well, yes, I'll have to admit that it did. What happened next? Well, uh, I told her how nice I thought she looked and that sort of thing, and she said, uh, this bathing suit is rather uncomfortable. Why don't you come on and finish your measurements? So I, I measured her thigh and upper and lower part of her thigh. Well, uh, how about her more personal measurements? Oh, yes, I, I, I made those, too. Did you write those down? Yes, I wrote them all down. I, what did you talk about while you were taking her measurements? We talked about this modeling, and uh, as we were talking, she said, uh, there's one little flaw, but you can't see it. But it might be seen if I wear something too brief, and that's why I ask you whether or not your model's pose scantily dressed or in the nude, because I have a rash. Where is this rash? Uh, it was on her hip. How long was she in the room in the bathing suit? Oh, all of 15 minutes. Uh, we had quite a chat and drank. Did you tell jokes? Now, Your Honor, I don't think this witness needs any suggesting from Mr. Tyler. He's telling his story, all right. Sustained. Tell us what happened then in reference to the bathing suit. Well, after a while, when we'd been drinking for a while, she said, just a minute. I'm going to change into something more comfortable. And she went back into the bathroom, and this time she didn't close the door. And she slipped into a dress. And when she came out, she said, uh, I got to find a pair of panties. And she went searching through her things and found a pair. Then what happened? Well, she went back over near the bathroom door, and she turned her back on me and, and put them on. All right. After she got her clothes back on, what did you talk about? We talked about things in general, and then she wanted to know uh, if I had any idea when she could get some money. Did you offer her money? Yes, sir, I did. How much did you offer? Well, actually, at the time, we were laying on the bed talking, and she wanted to know if she could get a couple of hundred dollars to fix herself up. She wanted to look as good as she could, if that's what it took to get the most money. How much money did you promise her, Ernie? Well, I told her that I thought by Saturday I could let her have a couple of hundred. You really didn't intend to give her two hundred dollars, did you? A little while later, I promised her that I'd bring it back uh, in about an hour. Where were you and Miss Hanson when you promised her two hundred dollars? Lying on the bed. Lying on the bed? Yes, sir. How many times had she kissed you up to that point? Well, we, we didn't keep count, sir. Now, Ernie Jones, will you state whether or not you had intimate relations with Greta Mae Hansen without her consent and against her will? I did not. Will you tell the jury whether or not you were, in fact, intimate with her. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sorry to admit that I was, in fact, intimate with her. Stupidly so. Thank you, Your Honor. We pass the witness. You're quite a salesman, aren't you, Jones? Well, I, I hope so. You kind of like that, don't you? Uh, sir? You kind of like this modeling business, don't you? Well, I like money. I... <laughs> yeah, you like money, all right. You're quite a talker. I think so. Did you sweet talk her into getting on the bed with you, Ernie? I said, uh, let's lay down for a while. Let's lay down for a while. I want to talk to you. 
Well, we were kissing at the time. Ernie, tell the jury just what you said to her to get her to surrender her virginity to you. I didn't know she was doing that, sir. You mean you don't remember the words? Well, you don't just uh, memorize them. It's... But you remember everything else that happened. Well, it's been a real job trying to recall every moment. I've relived them in shame ever since. You've relived them in shame ever since? Yes, sir. So this was just one of those natural attraction sort of things with this little Swedish girl, 3,000 miles from home. Is that what you're telling this jury? I'm telling the jury the truth, sir. Is that what you're telling this jury? I'm telling the truth. Is that what you're telling this jury? I have said it. You've said it? That's right, sir. I want to ask you this one question, Ernie, and I want you to tell the jury the truth on this one. When did you turn out the lights? When? Well, well... We never turned out the light. You never turned out the lights? Afraid she might escape if you let her go long enough to turn off the lights, weren't you? Well, I just never thought about it. That's all. It, Isn't it, it true, Jones, that you served a year in the Chicago jail? Oh, that was when I was much younger and didn't know any better than to accept stolen property. And how many times have you been convicted in this city, Jones? I don't recall any time, Statkins. You were brought into jail six years ago for passing hot checks, and again four years ago for vagrancy. Well, as you probably know, Mr. Atkins, vagrancy is a term used against Negroes when there's no other valid charge. You think you've learned to respect the law now? Isn't it going to take a conviction to make a believer out of you? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Now, this $200 that you claim you promised Miss Hanson, did you ever leave it at the desk? No, sir. I have to admit I did not. Just another one of your big lies, huh, Jones? That's all I have for this witness, Your Honor. That is all. Stand down. Call your next witness. May it please the court, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant rests his case. Close the testimony. Excuse all the witnesses. I will work on the charge. And when both sides have okayed it, we will listen to the arguments. Meanwhile, you had better take time for your dinner. It could be a long night. May it please the court. Mr. Tyler. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I thank you for your time this week. I live in this community. I have all my life. I have a girl 18 at the University of Texas and another 15. I believe that the rape law should be maintained. I have stood at the bar of justice frequently, representing many kinds of men accused of crime, and I am not ashamed of it. God help us if the power of the state is not checked by the juries and the lawyers who have the courage to stand up and fight for the individual's rights. There aren't too many of them left. Now, these gentlemen here, they are honorable, too. If Greta May says that she was raped, then they believe, Greta May, she was raped. Nothing else can be true. It doesn't make any difference that there wasn't a mark on her. It doesn't make any difference that the picture they took of her the next night showed that she was not bruised all over. It doesn't make any difference that the picture of old Ernie there taken the next night Show not a mark. And where did they find old Ernie? On his way to Mexico, hiding in the bushes with the bloodhounds baying at his heels? No. Old Ernie was at home. Oh, and that dress they bought for her just wanted to keep her warm. Why didn't they buy her a coat? I submit to you that that dress was indecent just as she was. White trash. Now, 
if the white trash of this country, and thank goodness there isn't too much of them, if they want to consort and lead the kind of life they want, fine. But when they come before an American jury in these United States of America, in Texas, and ask you to send a man to the penitentiary or to the electric chair on the testimony of a woman like that, I wouldn't convict a yellow dog on her testimony. She lied to you. She lied deliberately. There's no question about it. Who is this woman who isn't even an American citizen? Comes over to this country uninvited, an immigrant, and asks protection of our laws and customs. Are we going to apply her customs in Sweden to this country? Swimming in the nude, free love, and all that? So what was her reason in coming here? We were solving our racial problems just fine. Was she specially trained and sent here to cause upheaval? Was she sent to some special school in France or Italy? I'll leave it up to you ladies and gentlemen of the jury, about that. This woman is shrewd. This woman is smart. What her motives are, I don't know. Maybe they are publicity. Maybe she does want to go to Hollywood and get into the movies. Maybe somebody wanted to see if a Negro charged with rape could get a fair trial in the South. Mr. Adkins will tell you that Greta Mae Hansen was a virgin. And if she was, it's bound to be rape. Now, I don't know whether she graduated that night in room 14 and got a diploma or not. It doesn't make any difference. It's all got to start somewhere. A virgin can consent just as readily as a prostitute. And that is our defense, ladies and gentlemen. Consent. She consented. I place the liberty of Ernie Jones in your hand. And I know that your verdict will be quick, will be just, and will be not guilty. And perhaps we can be rid of that woman for good. Thank you. May it please the court. Mr. Atkins. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, perhaps I should save you this time, since Mr. Tyler has already made my arguments for me. Oh yes, we've been in court many times together, as he pointed out over the past 11 years. And I've never heard Mr. Tyler ever ask a jury to find his client guilty. Nor have I ever heard Mr. Tyler completely satisfied with the way the state has presented its case. Now, the state's witness, in this case, the victim, is a peculiar person. She's a stranger to our shores, 22 years old, still a virgin. She can't be compared with a woman in this community. Now, on the surface, you may say that, well, she got exactly what she asked for. But you'll think differently when you stop and consider the peculiar personality of this child from Sweden. Now, while I disapprove, and you may disapprove, she cast her lot with the Negro race. She's a missionary, if you please, a crusader. She's carrying their banner a soldier in their fight for freedom. She told you about it. She's proud of it. And before you're too quick to criticize, remember the examples of Eleanor Roosevelt and our own Supreme Court. Now, I believe in equal rights under the law, equal opportunities for education and for work. But I myself do not believe that the Negro and white races should mix socially. But that's my belief. Greta Mae Hansen has a different view. She volunteered herself as a freedom rider to go to Jackson, Mississippi. I couldn't help smiling when she said she integrated the bus station. 
And then, in explanation of it, she said, well, we walked into the waiting room and we got arrested. Now, that sure was a big integration, wasn't it? But that shows you how her mind and her heart works. Now, are you going to believe an ex-convict like Ernie Jones? Who knows what else he put in her drink besides rum and coke? Maybe even a drug. Are you going to take his story on faith alone? Or are you going to believe this girl? This girl who has suffered the tortures of the damned during this trial, whose whole story has been corroborated in every detail, who's laid her heart out on the table and let it bleed for you. This woman told you she'd never had intimacies before, had never even been molested until she fell into the hands of Big Ernie Jones over here. The glib-tongued ex-disc jockey. The advertising man. The expert on modeling. Who always carried his tape measure around with him. The doctor said, in my opinion, she was a virgin before this happened. Now, can you honestly believe that this beautiful woman carried her virginity for 22 years traveled all over Europe and this country and picked out you, Jones, to surrender her virginity to? The thought is absurd. It's preposterous. Old Ernie tried his wiles on this woman, this freedom rider, about the modeling and all that, but it didn't work. She didn't fall for it. So he resorted to force. That was the next step. He resorted to force. And under the believable testimony, he committed the act of rape by force on this woman. All I ask is that you be true to the oath you took to the God above, to a true verdict render, according to the law and according to the evidence. And if you do that, I believe from the bottom of my heart that you will find this man Jones guilty of the crime of rape. And I would say that life imprisonment is not one day too much for what he has done to this woman, to his race, and to this community. Or will you tap him lightly and by your verdict say that if a white woman is in a Negro hotel, she's fair game? How about that, Ernie? If a white woman acts foolishly and is in a place she shouldn't be, is it all right to rape her? If you hold that way, we will have chaos in Texas and all over the country. I ask you for a verdict of guilty. And by that verdict, you will say to this, this rapist and all would-be rapists and to all of Texas and all of the world, we believe in upholding the law apart from any prejudice because it is by these laws and their enforcement that we remain free. Thank you. It now becomes my duty to read to you the charge under this law. The defendant stands charged by indictment with the offense of rape, alleged to have been committed in this county on or about the 28th day of September. To this charge, the defendant has pleaded not guilty. The indictment in this case alleges rape by force, threats, and fraud. However, this case is being submitted to you only upon that part of the indictment which charges rape by force. Rape by force means the carnal knowledge of a woman without her consent obtained by force. Now, if you find and believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt 
that the defendant, Ernie Jones, did ravish and have carnal knowledge of the said Greta May Hansen without her consent? You will find the defendant guilty of rape as charged and assess his punishment at death or by confinement in the penitentiary for life or for any term of years not less than five. If you do not so find and believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, then you will acquit the defendant. You are further instructed that it is not necessary that consent be in words. It may be shown by evidence of acts and conduct of the female alleged to have been raped. And if she of her own will yields her person to the defendant, that would be consent. Therefore, should you find and believe that the said intimate relations were with her consent, then you will find the defendant not guilty. You are further instructed that a statement of the female alleged to have been raped that she did not consent is not sufficient to constitute rape by force, but she must resist and use every exertion in her power taking into consideration the relative strength of the parties and other circumstances of the case to restrain the defendant before he can be adjudged to be guilty of rape by force. And unless she does so resist, then consent is presumed. In all criminal cases, the burden of proof is on the state. The defendant is presumed to be innocent until his guilt is established by legal evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. And in case you have reasonable doubt as to the defendant's guilt, you will acquit him and say by your verdict, not guilty. You are the exclusive judges of the facts proved, of the credibility of the witnesses, and of the weight to be given to the testimony but you are bound to receive the law from the court, which is herein given you, and be governed thereby. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will retire to the jury room to consider your verdict when you have reached your verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the jury. When you entered this theater, you were given a subpoena, a summons that put you in the jury box in the case of the People versus Ernie Jones. The judge has charged you to render a verdict of guilty or not guilty on a question of consent. Greta May Hansen was free, white, and 21, the age of consent. If she did not consent, then it was rape, and Ernie Jones is guilty. If she consented, and Ernie Jones is not guilty and should leave the courtroom a free man. And now weigh your conscience. Follow the instructions on your summons. See if your decision coincides with the actual verdict brought in by the jury in and for the state of Texas. You have approximately three minutes while the management polls you the jury.
we, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I, I appreciate it. I, I want to... <laughs> All you on the jury who say that this is your verdict, raise your right hand. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You are now excused as jurors in this case. The criminal district court of this county in the state of Texas is now adjourned. shop still open? They're open. I'll be right with you. Of course, you know she took a polygraph test. Oh, huh? Got a Hanson. She took a lie detector test. Oh, yeah. I knew. Showed she was telling the truth, didn't it? How do you square that with a verdict of not guilty? It's a matter of definition. In her heart, she thought she'd been raped. By Texas law, she consented. Law is the best thing we've got to go by on this earth. For black, for white. <laughs> is it that we love Negroes more but if we love intruders even less. 